Hello there, I'm Bill Connors. Welcome to the October 2017 Aphasia Toolbox newsletter. We all know how important it is uh, that a person take a mindful, whole person approach to maximizing aphasia recovery, which will ensure uh, avoiding any kind of plateau in that recovery. Exercise, definitely, we all know it. We're preached to about it, how important exercise is in a person's well-being. For example, we know that boxing workouts are now uh, a standard uh, approach to uh, dealing with the effects of Parkinson's disease. Everyone at Aphasia Toolbox is involved in their own whole person recovery plan and exercise is an important part of that. So let's take a look at a few different studies that looked at how exercise can help uh, uh, anybody and especially someone recovering from aphasia. I'm going to look at dancing, memory, differential effects of, of exercise, how your brain really perks up during exercise, um, how, what kind of attitude you want to have about it, and then your brain uh, and your health relative to exercise. So let's share, I'm going to share my screen. Let's take a look at these studies uh, on uh, Chrome browsers. First of all, here's a study that talks about dancing, perhaps being able to reverse the signs of aging in the brain. And they looked at um, uh, uh, two different kinds of programs and found that the hippocampus was positively affected by learning dance routines. A second study looked at uh, having people exercise right after studying, in this case it was children, and how that exercising helped the person remember better what they had learned or studied. In the case of aphasia recovery, it would be what you had paid attention to and practiced. A third study looked at, beginning to look at what parts of the brain benefit from different types of exercise. So for example, lifting weights um, may help the prefrontal cortex, whereas yoga may be more involved in, in integrating thoughts and emotions. The parietal lobe, um, benefiting from sports drills interesting kind of concept in its infancy. Uh, we, we, we know from this study, it talks about how our brain has evolved probably hand in hand with our body and the work to work together and to enhance each other. This study suggested that physical exercise may um, hold one of the keys to uh, 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 preventing dementia by increasing how the brain metabolizes. This study talked about your attitude. I don't know about you guys, when I go to the gym, half the time I'm like, oh geez, I gotta do this. The other half I'm eager and ready to go. And when I'm eager and ready to go, my exercises definitely feel better and accomplish more. And you'll want to take more of a positive attitude to your exercise. Even if you didn't exercise formally prior to acquiring your aphasia, you'll want to find some type of exercise program that makes sense for you, uh, including working on getting that right arm moving again. So many of our clients at Aphasia Toolbox have recovered the use of their arm and leg. Uh, finally, it looks like the brain evolved uh, with a need for exercise. That it's not only good for our bodies to exercise, but our brain also is, benefits from that in particular ways. In the newsletter, we'll have uh, the websites that we're citing here. Um, what we, of course, do know is the big idea the takeaway idea is that exercise 
is a critical part of a whole person recovery along with nutrition, sleep, and so on. If you're interested in creating your own roadmap to recovery, contact us. We have a free consultation to help you take a look at where you are, what kind of resources are out there in particular for you, and how you can assemble that. All right. Well, thanks Sharon Renhack and her staff for creating another great newsletter.